Hey guys, you can see all the snow that we've lost. And, um, you know, there, it's been unbelievable, the warm temperatures. But the weird thing was this morning, when my wife went out to the chickens to open them up, it was like 7 o'clock, it was 45 degrees. Right now, it's 23. And it's only, uh, I think, quarter of three in the afternoon. So it's getting colder. We're supposed to have a single digits either tonight or tomorrow. Crazy, right? Hey guys, so it's a beautiful day in Pennsylvania today. It's Friday, um, the first Friday in February, and uh, I believe it is. Anyway, um, nice sunny day. The wind's blowing. It's actually drying stuff up. We lost a whole lot of snow last night and um, because it rained all night, and I'm surprised that it's the driveway's not you know a bigger muddy mess than it was or is. So. Anyhow, um, I wanted to do a, uh, I want to go further now with this. Um, you heard me talk about ethics and stuff, and uh, there's more, a whole lot to this. And, I mean, I, it used to take me a couple of semesters to go through a bunch of stuff like this, and you still can't teach it all. But anyway, let me just say this. The next thing I want to talk about, and I've been throwing this word around a little bit, and the word is called risk. R-I-S-K, risk, okay? <coughs> so, risk, and if and now, nowadays, because they've recognized the value of it, of, of understanding it, um, they have a thing called risk management. So, I'm going to get into that, I'm going to explain that a little bit, and maybe I can help you to understand where risk lies in your... Uh, business venture or even in your daily life and sometimes you this can help if you're planning for risk it can help you so anyway I have some notes here so you're going to see me looking down at them I haven't been using notes but there's sometimes I want to say things that I don't want to forget so um, anyway uh, what is risk okay so risk is when you are about to do something that will place you in the presence of a possible hazard, okay? Possible hazard. And probably the biggest one that everyone knows and everybody wants to harp about right away is safety glasses. Now, I'm not against safety, okay? But I am against not being able to see. And when, when I wear the safety glasses that I have, I, have, I lose peripheral vision. And sometimes peripheral vision causes, not the lack of peripheral vision causes me to be at risk. But I'm not arguing about safety glasses because they are definitely have their place. But anyway, let, let me go on with this. All right, so um, risk then is exposing something of value to danger. Now that's more of a definitions of risk when it comes to um, uh, business. So in business <clears throat> the main thing that you're after and the main thing that you want to protect is, um, is uh, your assets. But before we jump to that and, and get into the business end of this, let me just explain this to you. Um, we have risk in our lives all over the place. Why? Because man is so vulnerable. You know, you don't realize um, how easy it is for somebody to kick the can, all right, or die is what I'm saying. You don't realize how many times a day we run the risk of a possible problem. But I'll start in the beginning and basically it's like this. Marriage is a risk. Now, my wife would not like to hear me say this because in our marriage, she doesn't 
consider herself a risk, and, and she's not a risk. I mean, and after the years of being together, we know what one another is going to do, and that's the whole point. You know, knowing what's going to happen. But anyway, so marriage is a risk. Now, you know, we, we have this word that's become a dirty word in our society, especially with women, uh, women or feminists. And I don't think that they're doing themselves justice, but either way, I'm just going to say this to you. The, the word control. You know, you hear, oh, he's a control freak. You're trying to control me. This, that, the other freaking thing, okay? Look, I understand all that, and I know that a lot of that type of control isn't the best thing in the world. But when control is linked to trying to accomplish goals, sometimes control is needed to be able to keep things, you know, the way they should be. All right, so the other thing then, um, hunting. So, you know, you go hunting, or, or let me go back to marriage. So what is the risk in marriage? Well, let's say, um, okay, we get married, we, we're starting out young, we build a life together, we have a home, we have cars, we have all kinds of money in the bank, or whatever, no matter what you have, it doesn't matter if it's big or little. And the biggest risk in marriage is that someone falls out of love. So, you know, you could lose love. So, and you're opening your heart to this. I mean, you open your heart to the love, and if you don't find it, you don't have respect, you don't have love, you don't have caring, you know, you're at risk of losing your marriage. So, these are things that, you know, for a normal everyday thing is, is risk. So, the next thing I want to go to is hunting. Hunting is a risk. I mean, think about it. You're going to go out in the woods. Yes, you're wearing orange. Sometimes they don't for different seasons, but you're going to go out in the woods where there's a hundred, or in Pennsylvania, a million other hunters who have ra guns, right? And, you know, everybody's afraid of guns today. At least they think they are. Um, you go out in the woods, there's a million other hunters out there. This is not a risk? Of course it's a risk. Straight bullet here, somebody shooting, you know, where they shouldn't be shooting there. Um... Falling out of a tree and shooting yourself. Whatever the thing is, there's a risk there. But, you know, I'm just saying this is something. Okay, there's a risk there that, that can be taken. Alright, driving down the road. Sally just went into town. She has a dentist appointment. This is a risk. She's driving down the road. The road is technically a one-lane road. we got trucks coming all day long today. They're starting some new venture down there. And she, it's a risk that she may end up in a ditch, okay? So, um, of course, what she does is she just stops dead and stays there and doesn't care what they do because she's not moving. But anyway, um, you know, there's a risk to that. And, and in, any act, in any car thing, and I'm not trying to make light of it, but, you know, you, can, you could drive to, um, to Wendy's every single day to get your lunch and never have a problem your whole life, and then all of a sudden you can drive to Wendy's and... Next thing you know, you ain't coming home. Or it could be worse. You know, you lo not worse. Nothing is worse than dying. But I think that, um, you know, if you, uh, like you're in an accident and you lose your car and you can't get to work, you lose your job, you know, it can be a major thing. So risk is something we take all of the time. So um, uh, let me just explain this to you. In my videos, um, I get a lot of things about, you know, you should have glasses, you should have this, you should have that. Because they perceive, perceive danger. Why do I say perceive? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, I have no fear of heights. And I'm going to tell you why I don't have any fear of heights. When I was 12 years old, and I think I told this story before, but if I did, I'm sorry. If I didn't, then you're going to hear it. When I was 12 years old, my cousin and I were going to go hunting with my dad for the first time. Okay, and we, he was getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And my dad was one of these guys where, look, I'll take you hunting, but don't be dragging on my coattail out everywhere. He, he was really something. But anyway, here's what he did. 10 o'clock at night... On the day before hunting, now you're talking about almost December, the end of November, early December, and sometimes it's freaking cold, 
okay? My dad took my cousin and I to a fire tower. There were no lights anywhere. The only lights we had was what was on his headlights. My dad says to me um, and my cousin, look, if I'm going to take you guys hunting, i got to know you're not afraid of the boogeyman. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go up to the top of this fire tower and come back down. And that will assure me of that. Well, you know, my dad had a spotlight in the car, but he didn't freaking turn that on. He turned all the lights of the truck off, and the moon was out or the stars were out. I don't remember what, but anyway, my cousin and I started up this fire tower. Now, we did walk all the way up to that fire tower, and I'm going to tell you something. The wind was blowing like crazy. It was cold out. It's the first time we ever went up this fire tower, and I can still hear the metal, you know, steps as we were walking up this, and all the wind blowing through all these freaking angles that are holding these things together. And our idea was to him, he wanted us to go up and touch the door that goes to the thing. And we had to be able to explain to him what we saw, okay, when we got up there, or what we felt, or whatever. And that's how my dad taught me how not to be afraid of heights. Because I wanted to go hunting really freaking bad, okay? So nothing was going to stop me, including that. And that's what he did. So to this day, I have no fear of walking on an 8-inch beam. I don't care how high it is, as long as it's not real windy. But here's my point. I understand the danger of falling. I don't want to fall. So therefore, I make sure I don't fall by not going up on a beam or something in the wind, you know. Um, and I'm not talking about having safety gear now. I'm talking about uh, my, my person. By knowing what my steps are, my foot, the steps that I'm taking are what they should be. I'm not trying to run across a beam. I'm going to take my time walking just so that I can keep my balance. But, you know, like some people freeze up. I've had many guys that I've worked with. I had a Marine, a U.S. Marine. The guy was fearless until he went up on a roof. He hung on to this roof so hard it took three guys to get him down the ladder. He, he was scared stiff because of the way, you know, the building wasn't quite, uh, the building we were working on wasn't totally um, uh, braced. And, uh, you know, it had a little bit of movement to it. And he didn't like that. And, and this doesn't make anybody look smaller to me or less brave or anything. Um, it's a matter of, you know, do you have command over the risk that you're about to take, or don't you? And that's why I said the word control, okay? Because you need to have control over risk. Now, in marriage, the reason you lose control is because there's two people. It's not one person. In my own personal life, I don't have problems with any kind of risk because I am cautious, I understand the risk, and I know what to do when I'm about to enter it, the area that has risk. So, um, you know, you may say, oh, well, you know, you don't wear glasses. No, but sometimes when I use my grinder and I don't have glasses, I just close my eyes. I close my eyes and I finish, I know what I'm cutting and I just want to cut it off. Now, if I'm trying to do precise cutting and I got my face down in there, then I wear, you know, a shield. Now, this is not to say you should not wear a shield or you should wear a shield or it's optional. It may not be optional because depending upon the control that the company has, it may be very, very important to them to have this um, control. So anyway, um, so then in business, um, there's something called internal control. Internal control. So, internal control then, uh, and I'll write that down for you so you can remember. So, risk comes with internal control. Internal control. So, there's two legs to this thing, right? Internal control. So, say that to yourselves. Internal control. Think about what it means. Internal means within. Control means what we've been talking about, to, to handle the situation, to make it go your way. Handling something is not control. Making it go your way is control. And control 
if you own a business, is very much needed. Control's needed in your household. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, as men, we, we uh, tend to give control to our wives, and I'm saying this the way it is. Give control to our wives when we're not there to handle the situation, whatever it may be. Now, some women know how to handle control and, and use it, and some people don't know how to use it. And I'm not here to fight, you know, whether men are better than women, because I don't believe in that. But I do know that some people are smarter than others. So, depending upon the person, are they able to control what's going on and keep things, the internal control, the way it ought to be? Okay, so then, um, uh, internal control is, is a term that has, like I said, two legs to it. And what I mean by that is in, in internal control in your business, you have the literal forcing someone put your hat, put your hard hat on, put your safety glasses on. Do you have safety shoes? You know, say they're walking past the time clock or the time stamp or whatever it might be in a factory. This is you know a lot easier to do. Watching everybody. Do you have you know if you're running a lathe are you? And I know that. Today's probably out of the question, but, you know, do you have loose clothing or long hair, whatever. In a restaurant, they want you to wear a hairnet. Um, okay, so these things are what uh, the acting out and the uh, enforcement of the um, risk. You're, you're trying to eliminate this risk. You're trying to eliminate, you know, hair in the food. You're trying to eliminate somebody getting their arm ripped off. You're trying to eliminate somebody losing an eye. And why? Because you're protecting your assets. Because all of these things can cost you money. Now, I know that this is going to sound like a more greedy and talking about money, but this is the way business has to be. Okay? My personal life is not filled with greed and stuff. It all depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to some knucklehead, you know, I'll say anything to him just to get him off my back. But if I'm talking to somebody who, who understands, which is I'm hoping it's you, um, you'll understand what I'm what I'm getting at here. So anyway, you have this control, internal control over a business. And the one leg is the acting out of that, the enforcement of it, okay? So so from the internal control, and we'll go in two directions here, you have the enforcement I'm going to just write down. So the enforcement then of internal of the of the internal control that handles risk is just like I said put your safety glasses on put your hard hat on you have this in your SOP you tell people every day what the safety rules are they're plastered all over the freaking walls because we're such morons we can't remember anything um, but anyway you have signs all over the walls and people you know don't do this don't do that by the time you read all the don't do this and don't do that in my opinion sometimes you don't get any work done but I'm not against it I'm just disgusted that it has to be so prevalent when someone should be able to know, you know, don't do this or don't do that. Alright, so anyway, the enforcement of it. And then, besides the enforcement for internal control, when it comes to bookkeeping and accounting, you have an account for that. So what we're going to do is, um, let me see what I'm calling that thing. So one is what's known as the active or the enforcement, and the other one is called the recording. So, so we have what's known as the recording of the internal control that manages risk. So, what is record the recording of it? Well, if you write down a list of everybody who's working, like say you look at one person's. Um, Say I look at Carmine's thing for the whole month. Okay, he didn't lose he didn't lose any days of work. Everything is fine. Good. We have that recorded. We can see that. Then for some reason in September, what's going on here? He hasn't worked or he isn't working because he got hurt. Maybe he hurt himself. Did, did something wrong. Uh, something happened. And this can cause a problem. And, and there can be repercussions in business. You know, it, it could be a matter of, um, like I say, lawsuits that, that uh, uh, threaten assets. And assets is what you're protecting. So risk and internal control, you want to, the number one game 
The number one thing you're trying to do in business is to protect assets. Okay? Because without assets, without cash, without money, without um, the equipment you have, without good help, you can accomplish nothing if you don't have all of that stuff in order. Um, and someday I'll explain this to you. I call it the five M's. But um, anyway, for, for right now, just go with this. So protect assets. So risk in business mainly concerns itself with protecting assets. Okay? Now assets, like I just said, it's the people, it's the money, it is the, um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the equipment that you have, okay? It's anything that has to do with the way business runs. It can also be, and this may seem a little off, but it can also be um, a change in a customer's order, okay? Let's say someone ordered something and you needed, I don't know, a stainless steel rod three feet long. Let's say you're making some kind of bolt or something. All right, so you start this process, you start this thing, you spent a lot of money buying a whole bunch of stainless steel rods and all, you're starting to machine them, all of a sudden a change order comes down and says, look, we don't want these uh, rods to be that size, they have to be a quarter of an inch bigger. Well, holy crap, if you don't have risk and internal control and you don't have any money to handle that change order, you might be left hanging with a whole bunch of bolts because the company that you wanted to do whatever you could do for to make money and have them pay you just made a change that you cannot afford to get that change made. You, you, you don't have the money or the capital or the resources to make this happen. So risk can be something as simple as a change order, a customer that no longer needs you, like, maybe, like I'll give you a perfect example. Um, what if you are, you're selling lumber, maybe you're selling cherry, you're selling walnut, you're selling whatever to somebody who's making kitchen cabinets. All of a sudden, the guy who's making kitchen cabinets says, you know what, I cannot make money on these cabinets because I'm paying for this solid wood. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to start using veneered plywood walnut, veneered plywood um, or particle board red oak, and I'm not going to be using solid wood. Guess who just lost a customer? You, who usually fulfills the niche of having solid red oak or solid you know, walnut or whatever it may be. So that is part of risk management. You want to be able to foresee if there was a problem, what would we do? Okay, that is what's known as risk. You're out there, you're doing something. Now, it's a whole lot different to drive your car down the road. Okay, you had an accident, you were at risk, the risk fulfilled itself. You had an accident, now you're covered by insurance. Okay, hopefully no one got hurt. You get the car fixed, you move on. But in business, there's not a whole lot of times and... Um, now, you've got to watch how you write your contract, but there's not a lot of times, especially in small business, where if someone <laughs> says to you, well, I want all this stuff, and you order it in, and then two days later they say, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't really need that stuff. Okay, your money's tied up, number one. You have a product that very possibly only they needed, you know, and hopefully you've gotten some down payment money on that so that at least cover some of your loss. But here's the thing, that's the risk. So I'm not talking about, you know, controlling um, at this mo moment how to control loss, and, or not loss, but um, what to do in those situations. What I'm talking about now and what you need to understand that's very important is the risk part of this. How do I, and, and this is the thing that I was saying, how do I, knowing that risk is everywhere, how do I, eliminate risk or at least make the risk smaller so that it doesn't hurt me so much okay all right so let me give you an example of this every carpenter at least if he's done any work outside has stepped on a nail probably 
Okay? Now, if you're working with a carpenter and he's been doing it a long time, and you pull a brace down off of a wall and you throw it on the ground if you're a new guy and you have the nails facing up, 16 penny or 12 penny nails, let me tell you, this carpenter is going to stop what he's doing and he's going to go over there and knock the nails out or bend the nails over or, you know, do something to eliminate that risk of stepping on that. Plus, he's going to tell you by control and enforcement, don't throw boards on the freaking ground where you're working because, you know, you run the risk of stepping on the nails. Now, when it comes to risk, what I don't like about risk management is some companies go way overboard. Now let's talk about that. And it'll seem a little silly and then we'll get to the real point. Let's talk about this thing with nails. Okay, now you're taking boards down, remodeling, whatever, braces off. You got some nails there. Now you can do a couple of different things. We can say, well, okay, because there's nails in those boards, we want everybody to wear steel uh, flat shoes, steel sole shoes, soles. We want everybody to wear steel sole shoes. Okay, personally, I don't think I know of any steel soled shoes. Not to say that they don't have them, but I'm just saying, I don't really, I never had a pair. I don't know if they can get them, but that's one way out of this. The other thing we could say is, okay, from now on, anybody that's working in a position where there might be a board with a nail in it is not allowed to move. When you go in there in the morning, you have to stay where you're standing. Well, neither one of those things is practical, okay? It's not practical <coughs> to have that because, first of all, steel-soled shoes, even though you might be able to buy them, how is a carpenter, carpenter going to walk on a roof, for one thing? Okay, or when you bend down and you need to put your knee against something, you need to bend your toes. So you can't work with that. So these things are not practical to say this, you know. That would be a stupid way of trying to control stuff. And believe me, some of the things that OSHA says are stupid. Alright, and that's how stupid some of them are. Not all of them, but some of them. Alright, so anyway, in trying to uh, eliminate risk, so now what do we do? Now we say, okay... Look, we got a board. The problem is we got boards falling down here. They got freaking nails in them. How can we eliminate this problem of risk? And any old carpenter will tell you, by driving the nail out, pull the nail out, throw the nail in a bucket that's laying there or in a corner somewhere where nobody's going to bother it, and just throw the wood on another pile. Keep the area cleaned up. That's part of risk management. The simplest of things. Okay? The simplest of things. Um, let's say you're working around a welder and the guy's welding and you have no shield on. Well, you're 10, 15 feet away. Well, you know what? You still can get flashed from the welder. So we can say, okay, so the welder's not allowed to weld if somebody's within 15 feet of him. Okay, well, that, that doesn't sound too smart because what if the welder needs you to hold something? So we came up with it with... When you're working around a welder, you got to wear protective lenses or whatever it might be, you know, protective clothing. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to go over safety. I'm just trying to tell you how you develop a plan for risk management. And that's what you need to do as a business owner because it, it could be as simple as shoveling your sidewalk in the morning. I mean, a, a lot of times you'll see businesses, what happens when it snows? They're the first ones out there shoveling the sidewalk off, and they're the ones who don't care how much salt it takes to keep the freaking ice off of their sidewalk, but they don't want no ice on the sidewalk because they run the risk of being sued and losing money. And yes, we have people out there who walk around looking for this. I read an article recently from somebody in New Jersey that made believe he fell down so that he could sue someone. Well, cameras are pretty much watching that now. So, actually, even cameras are part of, of risk management. If it can help you to protect the assets, it's worth having, depending upon the situation. So, um, for, for the plan of risk management, you know, and how to put that together, remember what I'm saying. The enforcement of it, which is part of internal control, and the recording of it, which keeps track of data. So, in regular data, data just in in the um, just in your um, um, payroll account, you can find out if there's a risk problem. 
if you know what to look for. And what you would look for is people off of work, you know. Um, okay, they're off work. Why are they off work? Are, are they, are they, do they have a bellyache? Did they, you know, did they hurt themselves? What's the problem? And sometimes if they're sick, depending upon the situation you're in, maybe you don't want them back to work until they're not sick. That could cause a major risk. I'm sure hospitals might do something like that. I know schools should and don't. But, um, you know, this, this is all part of something that you need to look at. Risk management or risk. All right. Um, let me see what else I have here. So, the three things that I have down here that internal control covers. To me, the most important thing is protect assets. Because if you've got money, you can do just about... You can cover yourself. If you have money, you can afford insurances. If you have money, you can... You know, pay something off if it has to be paid off. I'm not talking about, you know, every lawsuit that comes down the pike. Because sooner or later you're going to be doomed. But I'm just saying. But anyway, secures assets. Um, internal control. Internal control builds accurate data. So, on this leg of it, you know, recording the data, being vigilant with keeping a record of accidents and stuff like that. All can help you to... First of all, defend your assets if you're in court. It can help you to foresee um, problems in the future and eliminate them, or at least try to eliminate them. Okay, that's building accurate data, and then uh, also the um, the internal control keeps the business legal. Okay, if you're running a business, and and um, and I'll give you a good example of this. Suppose somebody that's working for you robs you. Suppose that a person, and we, we've read about this, it's happened all over the place. What if somebody's doing your bookkeeping and they're cheating you? Okay, they're cheating what's going on. And, you know, down the road you're finding out, holy crap, we're short a quarter of a million dollars or fifty dollars, it doesn't matter. We're short. Why are we short? Okay, and this is what you want to look at. So, internal control, the, it's the risk of losing assets, which is what somebody does when they rob a company, whether they steal a shovel, or a freaking rake, or a chainsaw chain, or gas, or use your car for non-working purposes. Risk that protects assets is being affected. So, internal control then, and the recording of the things that are going on, can help you to find where the problem is. Now, how do you find the problem of somebody skimming off the top? Well, it's pretty freaking easy. All you need to do is when checks come in, especially nowadays when they have computer stuff, you can look and see what came in today. Okay? I got a check from John Doe, and, you know, it was for $500. I looked down my thing. It's deposited into the account. But the account only shows 350. What's going on here? So you look at that and you say, where did this other money go? And that's how you find it. it. You may not think it's that simple, but technically it's that simple. All you got to do is know what you're looking at. Follow the, you know how they say follow the money trail? That's all you got to do. Follow the paper trail. And the paper trails are usually fantastic. They hang so many people it's not funny. Because... People, when you, when you have an accounting system that's elaborate and there's a whole bunch of different things you got to fill in, nobody can keep that all straight in their head. That's why you write it down. Okay, that's the purpose of writing it down. If you could keep it in your head and I could answer questions off the top of my head as to where every dollar went, oh, well, no problem. I don't need accounting. But I need accounting because I need somebody who can organize the data and show me what's happening when I need to know. It's not really a rocket science for you to figure out that if I got a check for 500 and 350 is deposited, something is wrong. That's not rocket science. Okay, that's diligence. Let's go back again. We're going to link all this together. So, as long as you recognize that you can find your problems with risk by recording with the, by recording and using enforcement from the internal control that you have. Now, the in internal control can also be something like an SOP. 
In other words, you have an SOP and it says everyone must wear safety glasses who come onto our property, or everyone must wear a hard, hard, hard hat <coughs> when they come onto a project. You know, those are all part of risk. They're all, all part of trying to keep you know people safe. And um, you know, <coughs> you go to Walmart and. Uh, if you buy tires there or whatever, and you know, there's a great big sign, nobody's allowed inside here. You're allowed to look in, but you're not allowed to go in. And, you know, that can be a good thing. I don't like that personally, but I understand why they have it. I love being able to talk to the mechanic about what he's doing to my car. But, of course, at Walmart, you know, let's face it, there's people who are more of, sometimes more of a nuisance than they are being inquisitive. So, you know, sometimes that's what happens. It's the same thing on any project. You know, somebody's trying to do something, somebody comes up, hey, um, you're cutting all those pieces of drywall and throwing them out the window. Can I have them? Yeah, but, yeah, you can. But, and please, get away from me because you're stopping me from nailing up the next sheet of drywall. Or whatever it might be. And, and that's how things go. And not only that, they distract you. You know, if you're in the middle of something, let's face it, if I'm in the middle of sawing a log, I don't want somebody standing there watching the saw blade go through, that they get slapped in the face with the blade, or, you know, they distract me and I get slapped in the face with the blade. So, these are things that you want to try to control a little bit. Now, if it's somebody that's watching and you know they know that that blade can smack them in the face, that's different, because there's an awareness there. And that's what I was saying about... Um, the uh, three, when I mentioned marriage hunting and um, uh, driving down the road, you, if you have control over the whole situation, that is different. What happens when you get into an accident? Someone lost control usually, okay? I mean, I guarantee you that if you get into a car, put it in drive, put your hands up in the air, stomp on the gas pedal, I guarantee you, you will have an accident. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So you need, the dirty word, control by hanging onto the freaking steering wheel and keeping things away from your feet so you can stop. So here's the whole point. You need to have that control. And look at it like I'm saying it. You want to be a control freak when it comes to risk. Okay? You want to enforce it heavily and severely. And here's what can happen in risk management. It's a hot summer day, guys are working out there, the, the sun's beating the death out of them, it's, you know, they're losing moisture out of their body, they're sluggish, they're getting slowed down, they're not as sharp as they ought to be, the sun's in their eyes, they, you know, all these things are taking place and they're becoming a little sluggish. And as they become sluggish, maybe they take their hat off for a second. You know, take your hat off and wipe your brow, and meanwhile, a two-by-four falls on your freaking head. Or whatever. Now, you know, these things don't always happen, but they do happen. That's the problem. So, in your business then, in your business model, with all the things that we've talked about so far, you want to include your thinking about risk. And risk... For you little guys, you know, the small business or for any business, protecting assets is the name of the game, okay? Yes, I have other things down here, you know, that risk management does. Uh, builds accurate data, which is this part of it, and keep the business lawful. So, you can help keep your business lawful in losing and risk by knowing how to read your books. And then read them. Okay? Just having a... I, I love this. I, I watch people go... To, I watch people go to a friggin' tax guy, right? I, I, I had an accountant for a long time that I would go, or that would... Actually, he came to my place to do my taxes. <laughs> but one time I went to his place, and I'm sitting there with him, and a guy comes in... He's got a freaking shopping bag with papers in it. He's got a plastic bag with papers in it. He's got a briefcase that he's hanging on to. You know, someone's not keeping order here. you got to have some order. Because you only look like a fool when you're out of order, really. So, and think about what I just said. When the judge hollers out to you, you're out of order, it's because you've just made a fool out of yourself. You've said something that you shouldn't have said. So, you know, you got to go sometimes with the flow of things. But anyway, I, I hope you're understanding this. So, just remember some of these things. Risk, 
which is involved with risk management when it comes to business. Risk is a matter of protecting pro uh, to protect your assets, okay? To re to record what's going on in your books will run will help you to eliminate the risk of theft. And you know, let me just say this about the theft part. It's not always only about theft. You know, what if you what if you yourself Oh, I got a check for $500. So $500, you're writing it down and for some reason over here you wrote $5,000. Okay, you didn't think about it. It kept going. You know, next thing you know, you're looking at your account. Wow, we're doing pretty good. We got $5,000 here that I didn't think we had, but anyway, let's go with that. Well, right there, you've just run the risk of losing assets because now you might go buy something. Guess what? You can't afford. Now, I know this sounds like a crazy problem to a small businessman, but believe me, I have had checks already for like $20,000 that I forgot to forgot to take out of my briefcase and put into the you know the system of the business so that it would happen only to find out why are we not able to pay the light bill why well if you would have given us the money you know maybe we could have so risk can be something as simple as that you know you can make a mistake yourself write down the wrong number and have a problem. This is again why you want to look at this recording of data. You know, don't put that off. Don't 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 say to your wife, um, I'm gonna go out there and do the work, you handle the books. I'm not <coughs> this does not mean that your wife cannot handle the books. This means that two people looking at the books is better than one person looking at the books. Because she'll have all the answers for you, but you have to have all the questions, okay? That's how this works. It's the best thing that can happen to you. You and if you have, if you've ever had a good uh, secretary working for you, Sally and I had had a very good secretary working for us. And when we would talk to her and say, you know, what's going on here? What's going on there? Before I even got it out of my mouth, she would already be saying, this is what happened here. This is what happened there. This is what. Okay, those are the things I need to know. And then you can appreciate that person, and they become worth more than you're paying them for. You know, which is a good thing. So anyway, guys, I hope that this little thing on risk um, helps you out a little bit. Um, there's a lot of things to know about it. There's a lot of things to consider about it. In, in your um, business, and you start to write an SOP, and, and believe me, you ought to write an SOP and be updating it every day that you work or every time you get a chance. Standard operating procedure, it should change, and if it doesn't ever change, there's something you're doing wrong. It should change, not, I'm not saying daily, possibly, or monthly. If it's a new venture, you might have to change daily, but at least yearly. At least there should be an annual review, if nothing more, than to look at your books and go over, you know, the risk, your payroll accounts, all these other accounts, and ask questions. What is happening here what took place why this and why that whether it's good or bad so all right guys so that's about it for today um, on risk I'm getting a pretty good response to this stuff and I'm glad that I am um, it makes it worth doing in my mind so anyway that's basically all I have for risk at the moment So anyway, like I say, you know, if you can follow this, I'll go over just one time, I'll link this one more time. Risk or risk management handles the problem of protecting assets. You protect assets by enforcing the, uh, the uh, risk management, whatever, they, whatever you decide, like wearing glasses or, you know, doing, uh, two different people handling books. It all depends. And then you also, by recording and enforcing, you protect your assets. And, and in my mind, protecting assets is the number one thing. I mean, uh, building, you automatically, by protecting assets, you automatically build a good record for yourself. Yeah, you build a good record for yourself of data. 
and and that's you know that data needs to be, be protected and you need to review it and view it you know on a regular basis it, it, if you're small it doesn't have to be all the time but you need to remember it so try and write these things down and then follow through with okay you know just like a checklist for the day you might say well look I just checked the oil an hour ago I'm not going to check it again but I, I do want to see if I have fuel okay that makes sense but you know three days down the road I haven't checked the oil for three days I better check that as well as checking the fuel so you'll kind of get a sense of what's going on and you will know when to handle this and the good thing that I had going for me was I could remember numbers like you wouldn't believe I could remember that's why I liked when they told me the numbers in the morning on my desk you know what we had what was going on and stuff I could remember those numbers even to this day I can remember phone numbers and stuff that I used to use years ago but the point is is that that's something that you know you need to develop and anybody can develop it when you expose yourself to something long enough it'll come out your mouth okay all you gotta do is you know it's kind of like when you say to yourself man I sound like my dad yes because you've heard something so many times that now you're saying it so you if you review yourself every day every day every day and keep things going properly plus do the work which this sounds hard and it is to have a good business you can do it but just develop this pattern so that you know when you have this pattern you're half asleep coming in because you work the overtime shift you can still do your job because you know you know you might do it slower but you know what to do guys have a good one and thanks for watching